One of the things that's just absolutely brilliant about the Nintendo Switch is the fact that you can play console quality games either on a big TV like this or in handheld mode. But now for different people like myself, I hate playing the Switch in handheld mode, at least out of the box. I don't like the fit and feel of the Joy-Cons. They're too thin for me. They're just, I am not a fan of the Switch out of the box in handheld mode or the Switch OLED. Now, there are other devices out there that can go ahead and enhance your handheld experience, and that's what we're gonna talk about here today. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rockstar Productions. Thanks for stopping by and checking out what we have going on here. I really do appreciate it. What I wanna know from you here in this episode, so I've got Super Metroid playing behind me. It's a game I've played a little bit here and there over the years, but I have never really gotten into Super Metroid. What is one popular game that everybody else you know loves and you're just like, eh, it's okay. Another game, I mean, Breath of the Wild, I think is wildly overrated, but you know, Super Metroid, I've always enjoyed what I've played. I've just never gotten into it. So the folks over from Dolby have sent us this here. This is a controller dock handheld grip for the Nintendo Switch and the Switch OLED. And basically what it does is very similar to some of the other grips that are out there is it actually completely surrounds the system and replaces your existing Joy-Cons with this whole total unit. So what we're gonna do in this episode, we're gonna take this, we're gonna throw it on the photo bench, we're gonna check and see how it comes out of the box, what you need to do to get up and running, and how it plays. Let's go get started. So here we have the, the Dobe or Dobe Electronics controller for the Switch and the Switch OLED. Uh, as you can see from the front of it, it's basically just a grip that you install your Switch into, but it also has these back buttons as well. Um, nothing really on the side. Now they do offer it both in white and black. This is the white version we're gonna show you here. And then on the back, yes, it does have four custom back buttons, sweatproof design, built-in six-axis gyro, uh, multiple uh, thumbsticks, double motor vibration, and it does have a fast charging option on here too. So, interesting. Let's go ahead and let's open this up. Now, they did send us this for purposes of review, but they're not reviewing the content before it goes live. So, I do want to thank them for helping us out here. Nice bubble wrap. Uh, it's very, very nicely packed in the package. And this is for J Love and Lady Lacey uh, over at Do You Nerd and J Love 81. Oh, fail. Fail! Okay. How about that? How about that? Okay. So it also has little foam donuts around the thumbsticks to protect it during shipment. That's a nice touch. Uh, I'll tell you, these are right, you know, right where your fingers rest, so that's good. It does feel wide, I will say that. D-pad feels very, very firm, um, like it doesn't have a, a huge rocker underneath it. Analog sticks feel smooth, pretty clicky on the buttons there. These feel analog on the back, digital up top there. I don't see a battery in here at all. Input voltage, 15 volts. Input current, 1.5 amps. I'm thinking this is just a pass-through is all that that is. Rail adapters, is that how they're getting past the uh, width difference on the Switch versus the Switch OLED? That's interesting. And then here's our different thumbsticks. So there's four different uh, thumbsticks, basically two of each size. No, not even two of each size. Yeah, they're all different, so um, I don't know if I like that. Uh, give me two of the same, so that way I can have the same uh, experience left and right. The closest seems to be like this one and that one kind of, sort of, but not really, and then to remove it, looks like, yep, they just pop straight off. Pop the new one back on, and just snaps into place. Okay, let's take a look at the instructions real quick. The advanced controller is designed specifically for the NS Nintendo Switch console. The console is directly plugged into the controller through the USB interface. You will then have to pair the controller with the console, but after initial pairing, the controller will connect to the system automatically. It is a must for gamers. Walks you through the left 3D joystick, the cross button, the D-pad, screen capture, USB Type-C charging interface, the home button, right joystick, ABXY buttons, uh, Z, R, R, Z, L, L, 
custom button M1, M2, M3, and M4. How are they used together? So uh, they're calling these gaskets. Um, so basically you use, um, you use the gaskets with the, the original switch, not the OLED. So um, looking at this here, that's what it's doing is because the switch, the original switch is narrower, you use those gaskets on the side uh, and then it will plug everything in, walks you through pairing and function diagram, custom button programming, charging instructions, um, pretty simple and straightforward. Now, before we can use this with our switch, we've got to do a couple of things. First and foremost, we need to make sure one of the settings inside the system is turned on accurately. So go down to system settings. We're going to scroll down here to controllers and sensors. Go over. You need to make sure that this is on. This is the pro wired communication. So basically what that will allow you to do is allow the switch to work with a wired controller such as this. So I already have mine set to on. The next thing we need to do, remove the joy cons and we need to, at least for the original switch, slide in the rail adapters. Now it is important that you install them the right direction. Yeah. I think that's right. Now we just take the system, slide it into the grip, and now it popped on as paired. Now I'm gonna shut off the overhead simply so you don't see that glare. We're gonna test out several games on this real quick. So let's go ahead and dive into some NES Online because I wanna see how this D-pad performs. You know, we're going to start off with Donkey Kong just because having quick left-right motions is pretty important in this. So far, so good. Although the D-pad is super stiff, I will say that. So we got through that. We'll go to game selection here. Try out some Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, for me, the D-pad is a little bit too firm. The responsiveness is good though. You hit a button and it responds. I mean, it just, it feels to me, it just feels really, really wide. Let's go back. Actually, we're going to go to the home screen. I'll say the home button works perfectly on here. Let's try out Street Fighter. I don't know if you can see it there, but that light was flashing and now it's on solid. That's weird. Okay. And we're going to use both the analog stick and the D-pad. I'm going to start with the D-pad. There I will say the diagonal was not great. Ooh, got him. It's okay. Um, I'm going to the analog stick. This just feels more comfortable to me. Could not pull off the dragon uppercut there. We'll try it here in the next round. I was able to pull it off with the D-pad. Got him. All right. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to actually pause this, turn off the switch OLED, just going to slide straight out, slide out the switch, and now we're going to put in the switch OLED because this to me is such a better handheld experience than the original switch as I almost drop it. And uh, I actually was playing some Super Mario Kart 8 Deluxe the other night. We'll get into that in just a second. Well, we've got it here. Let's check out the uh, N64 gameplay. Now, one of the things I don't think that the Switch OLED gets enough credit for is how much better the onboard speakers are than the original. You know, I think we need to try some Yoshi's Story. For one and only Square Pegs. J, 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 J. He loves this game. Make sure you check out Square Pegs 
ask him what his favorite part of Yoshi's story is. Wow, the rumble is super impressive on this too. And I'm gonna set it down here for a second. Let's see if you can hear the rumble. Do you see that? It's pretty impressive. The one thing I will say is that um, I always screw up, if I haven't played this version of Yoshi in a while, screw up the button presses for um, what he uses to throw with. Got him. Got him again. Again, I am really impressed with the rumble on this. It is really much better than probably deserves to be. Poochie! All right. So that works fine. Now, one of the bummers about this is the fact it does not feature a turbo. Um, so that, that is important to note. Button presses feel good for this too. Again, the D-pad works great for this as well. Oh, we've got the twin lasers. There we go. Don't worry, Slippy, I got you. Yeah, I will say the uh, the analog stick is working great for this. Will do. Yeah, this is playing terrifically. So the right analog stick works great for the uh, uh, C stick buttons, basically. And again, you can hear the rumble, which is just terrific. Ah, dang it, I did not save Falco. All right, so that is working great. Let's check, let's go back to the home screen now. Try some Super NES real quick. That's how we can do here on uh, the original F-Zero. Analog stick working decently for this. Ooh, nice landing, got around him there. Such an amazing game, such a great soundtrack too. Oh, overshot the corner there. We're gonna move to the D-pad here for a little bit because that is how this game was designed to be played was with the D-pad. Again, I do think it's a little bit on the firm side. A little lift and go there. Please stay out of my way. You know, I, I don't love this control scheme. I prefer the analog stick. Part of it is just where the analog stick is placed. It's just more comfortable for me up here. All right, this is pretty good. We're gonna go back to the home screen. We're gonna finish it off with some Mario Kart 8. Now, one of the things I am gonna do on this, I'm gonna test it two different ways. I'm gonna do it normally to finish it off, but I'm also gonna go ahead and use the tilt controls and see how it works. And we're just going to do the 50cc just for fun, for some testing here. We're going to go to the new tracks. There we go. So now you can see right down there we are using the uh, motion controls. It's working. Wow, this is hard to control. But the uh, gyro controls do work. Whoop. Whoa, oversteer majorly there. All right, we're gonna pause this because I can't do that. So we are going to turn tilt controls off, but there you saw, yes indeed, the gyro controls do work. Okay, that was cheap. I had the banana behind me. We'll go ahead and drop the babam there. Somebody set us up the babam. I have to say the new tracks are really, really fun. Like this, I think, is out of uh, the Super Mario Kart Tour. And I have to admit, I don't like that one a whole lot because of the motion controls and because of the on-screen controls, quite honestly, so. Whoa, no, 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 no! Blue shell, jerk face. The music on this level two is fantastic. 
I think there was a shortcut there that I missed. Yeah, rumble again on this is terrific. Yoshi and Toad sitting on the side of the track there. I would have been mad there if I would have gotten hit because I have the spinning bananas. Oop. Yeah, I will say that playing this in handheld mode is really, really good. What? Oh, he's almost a lap down. All right, now it's time for some final thoughts. So what do we think of the Dobe grip for the Nintendo Switch and the Switch OLED? Well, let's talk about some things that does really, really well. First and foremost, the rumble on this is exceptional. It's really, really good. Uh, I will also say the face buttons, ABXY, very large, very clicky, very easy to use. The analog sticks also very, very smooth. Uh, as good as the analog sticks are, however, well, the D-pad just isn't. I will say that it is way too firm, does not have enough travel, and at least for me, borderline useless. Um, and that's, I'm trying not to be overly harsh because this does do a lot of things really, really well. Now, if you like a bigger size grip, consider this. I don't. So I will probably not use this a whole lot because I like a smaller grip. So that is something to keep in mind. What about something, you know, comparing this to something like the Split Pad Pro? I like this better because it is more comfortable. Everything, to me, it just feels more secure. One of the things I don't like about the Split, Split Pad Pro is when you slide it into the rails, there's rocking up and down. And to me, that's very concerning that you could possibly damage your Switch. I also feel overall like this is small enough or smaller enough than the Switch Pad Pro that I would at least consider using this. To me, the Split Pad Pro, super huge. Was not a fan of the overall size of those. However, if you do like the Split, Split Pad Pro, it's easy for me to say, right? Definitely something here that you would want to consider. Um, I thought that the way that they incorporated both the Switch and the Switch OLED into this was pretty unique. The fact that it is wider for the OLED, pretty much expected. But the, the little trays that go into the rails, it's a neat way to go ahead and take up that extra space. Now, I will say I have used my original Switch here without those in place, and it does work. Should you do it that way? Probably not, because it could cause some stress and some tweaking here on the USB-C port. You don't want to do that. Um, it charges right through here without an issue. The only problem I had was a problem with both of my systems. Weirdly, both of them had the same issue where for some reason I had to do a hard reboot. I had uh, wired USB connectivity turned on on both of them, but this would not work for me. I did a hard restart on both of them and it worked just fine. So uh, very interesting there. Like I say, this is better for me than the Split Pad Pro, but it's still huge and probably not going to be my personal way that I play in handheld mode. I just, I really love the Fixture Gaming S2. For me, this is my preferred way still to this day to play the Switch in handheld. But this, you know, not a bad option. Uh, they, they actually have done a fairly good job here. I did switch out the analog sticks uh, like I showed you on the bench. Once I switched them, I never switched out. These are the ones I used throughout the entire test. They were comfortable. I do wish that there were matching sets of analog stick, basically the, the toppers on there. But above and beyond that, something you should consider. Now, if you are looking for other videos that we've done on other controllers, grips, docks, and more from the Nintendo Switch, Switch Lite, and Switch OLED, those videos are coming up for you with Yoshi right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you wanna help support Rock Solid Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos.
You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you want to stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to CastleManiaGames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at CastleManiaGames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.